Hey guys, how you doing? Just recorded a little clip. I've seen one. Seen one for the first time since October. Just a really supple little movement. I've got the buzz now. First thing I've seen since October. So exciting! Don't know what it's doing on the surface. It is flaming freezing. It was just, uh, if you haven't seen my previous video, there was um, a coot just disturbed, disturbed um, Mr. Carp. He was sitting in the top layers of the water. He must have been sitting like really just like an inch under the surface because his dorsal fin wasn't above the water. But I saw a coot was making a racket and it moved into a bit of water, disturbed Mr. Carp. Mr. Carp just went and that was it. And I presume he went down, I don't know. But just, just if I'd been looking at that moment, it was done and dusted in five seconds, probably less than that. So I was well lucky to see it. Thank you, Mr. Coot, for giving the game away. Mr. Ziggs are coming out. I've got to pop home in a bit and get some medicine. Um, run out of medicine, so I've got to go home and get some more meds, but um, I'll be back tonight with some Ziggs. Get in. Right, thought we'd have a waffle. I've recorded a couple of waffles that I haven't managed to upload yet. Um, I've done one yesterday on um, on dealing with silt, which I'll upload. You might even see that before this one. Um, I'll upload that one when I get a chance. Um, the, these waffle things are just um, me just talking for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, just on, you know, might be something you can stick on when you're in the car or something, or, you know, you don't necessarily have to watch it. You're not going to miss a lot if you don't watch it, but put on when you, I don't know. It's just uncut me waffling, basically, for 20 minutes about carp fishing. Um, so, uh, yeah, a few people have seemed to enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Might do, carry on doing them, quite enjoy it actually, saves a lot of editing. We'll call it, I don't know, raw and uncut. <laughs> Sorry, I was just making sure that speaker wasn't active. I've done a video and my Bluetooth connected to my speaker and the microphone on that's pants. So I wasted a whole uh, 20 minutes recording a video that turned out to be useless because that microphone was attached. So sorry, I was just checking that. Uh, yeah, so what I thought we'd talk about this waffle, actually, is someone gave me an idea. Um, someone sent me a message or a comment. can't remember if they commented or sent me a message or something asking why I never tell, never say what my fish weigh. And it's a simple answer to that one because I don't know. <laughs> I don't weigh my fish. Um, still cold Mr. Coffee is no it's a coot got a thing too I hope you don't mind but I'm going to watch the water and talk to you at the same time because I just want to see if I can see another sign um, that's one facing this way so sorry if you've got blown out in the background but I want to carry on watching the water um, so yeah I don't weigh my fish the simple answer to that there's a reason I don't tell you how much it weighs because I haven't got a clue um, I suppose I could say a rough guess but to me the weight I, I don't I don't care how much they weigh. I just enjoy catching fish, to be honest with you. I used to weigh them. Uh, don't get me wrong, I used to. I've, I mean, like, if you go on my record of kind of what fish I've caught, I, you know, I suppose I stopped weighing them 10 years ago, maybe. I can't, I'm terrible with time. Time just goes past me. I've got no idea, but I think I stopped weighing them about 10 years ago. And at that time, I think I'd caught about, you know, I'd recorded all my fish up until that time. So I had over 100 English 30s and oh, God knows how many 20s. Can't even remember how many 20s. Um, um, I've never been one for measuring like small fish, like low, low doubles and high doubles and that. I've never been one to weigh them because no offense to them fish, but you know, kind of my. My viewpoint of a big carp is 20 pound. I don't know, that's a lot of people's viewpoint, isn't it? When you catch a 20 pounder, that to me is a big carp. 30 pound is a huge carp, 40 pound is massive. 50 is just, you know, ridiculous. I know fish go to 100 pound nowadays, but that's still the, that's still the, my mindset on big carp. So I always, I'm, all, I'm a, I like to class myself as a, well, I like to, I class myself as a big carp angler. Like I fish for big fish. Every fish in this place is a big fish. Um, you know, 30 pound plus. And that's kind of, you know, that's, that's my target. So I still fish for big fish and I like catching big fish, but the weight is immaterial, whether it's 39, 15 or 40 pound and an ounce, it, I don't care, I really couldn't care less. Um, and I know that doesn't jive with some people and I'm not being elitist or anything like that, it's nothing like that. It's just, I really don't care about the weight. It, I, just, I just really enjoy my fishing. I enjoy catching them. The good part for me is I love the run. The run is exhilarating. I love catching them. I hate playing them. Can't stand the fight. 
too shaky, my knees go and everything. Still, after 35 years of carp fishing, my knees still go when I catch fish. But I think that's a good thing, isn't it? You know. Um, but yeah, I don't like the fight, any way, shape or form. So if I could skip the fight, that'd be awesome. <laughs> but I suppose if you didn't lose a few, it wouldn't be carp fishing, would it? But yeah, so I love hooking them. I love the run. And then I love landing them. And then, because I'm a little bit poorly, it takes me a little while to recover from that. So I have to leave them in the net for 10, 15 minutes, which I think is a good thing anyway. Um, and then I love, you know, seeing them on the bank and, and getting, a, getting a bit of video or getting a photo or whatever. And then my favourite bit, putting them back, obviously. Um, I'll always, if I can, wade in with them and put them back, you know, in a nice way if I can. And I love that. Um, and that, for me, is the enjoyable part of it. In If people want to, in between all that, weigh them and get a number on it, great, go for it. Uh, the whole point of carp fishing is you enjoy you, you know, you do what you want to do to enjoy it. For me, I couldn't care less. Um, and what I did with my, what I did, oh, again, time, I don't know, 10 years ago, five, 10 years ago, some of that. Um, I think it's probably nearer 10 years ago. It might not be as long as 10, but maybe seven years ago, some of that. I kind of had a little bit of a talk with myself and a little bit of a harsh look at myself with my carp fishing and kind of realized that I was doing an awful lot of stuff for other people and not for me. Or I was doing a lot of stuff um, as routine that's more like it not for other people I was doing stuff for routine rather than what I enjoy um, and also I was doing a lot of stuff that I just like didn't need to do to enjoy it and also bringing a lot more kit with me so I'd, I'd kind of had this little like I don't know what we call it epiphany or what but I kind of just I, I spoke to myself it's when I was quite poorly and I was I was on the verge of giving up fishing because I could hardly get to the bank and I made two choices. I bought an electronic barra. That's probably the first thing that saved my fishing because I could get to the bank easier. And I decided to fish a lot simpler. Um, and if I could give a bigger, biggest tip to anybody now on how to, one, enjoy their carp fishing more, and two, catch more fish is simplify everything. Because for me, taking all these elements out of the equation has just made it so much simpler in my head. I concentrate on the big things and I've caught a hell of a lot more fish by doing it. Uh, and I've enjoyed my carp fishing immensely more by doing it. So I'll tell you what I did. I, I, I looked at all different processes of my fishing. So first of all, I took all my kit. I used to take a ridiculous amount of stuff down to the lake. All my photography gear, you know, like two, three bags of photography gear. Probably excessive. Two bags of photography gear. God knows how many bits of various kit, tables and God knows what. Sideboards, dining table, sink. <laughs> Not quite, big. Um... And then I used to bring, um, my rig board used to look like a scrapyard's office. It <laughs> so many bits of metal and stuff hanging off it. You had about 15 different rigs for every scenario. Um, and weighing fish, I looked at that and I was like, and I realised kind of when I went through every single element of my fishing, I went through, right, what, what do I take to the bank first of all? And I went through all my gear. I went through every single bit. Do I need it to enjoy my fishing? Am I just carrying it for the sake of it? And do I need to actually physically take it to the bank? Could I get away with just leaving it in the car? That's a big thing as well. So like all things like spare leads and stuff like that, you don't need to bring them, leave them in the car. If you need them, go and get them. It's all, it's all weight, in it? So, in it. God, sorry, I hate saying that. Um, isn't it? So I, um, I looked at, first of all, like going through all my kit. First of all, tackle, right? What tackle do I need? Actually, we'll do tackle last. So I looked at all my kit. What do I need? Right, tables. What tables do I need? You know, that right, okay, living table and a spare table because I find it difficult to bend over. That's a necessity. Right, fantastic. But my table's a bit heavy. Let's buy a lighter one. Right, do I need to bring spare reels to the bank? No, they can stay in the car. Do I need to bring spare spools of line? No, they can stay in the car. Leads, they can stay in the car. Uh, do I always use my zig kit? No, that can stay in the car. And if I need it, I'll go and get it. Um, and I went through every single bit of tackle. I'm not going to go through it all now with you, but what do I need to take with me? What do I need to leave in the car? Cooking stuff, gas. Do I need to bring three ca cans of gas? Three cans of gas to the lake? No, I'll bring one. I leave two in the car, and then when I need it, I'll go back and get the other one. All stuff like that. So, water. I used to bring all my water to the bank for some stupid reason, you know, because I bring a lot of water with me. I drink a lot of water and stuff. Well, drink more coffee than anything. <laughs> um, you know, I used to bring all the water. No, we just bring one, and then leave the spares in the obvious stuff but just like me being a thicko didn't 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 all add up so um yeah so i um i had a strict look at myself and all my kit cut my kit massively down 
massively down. Um, and also the amount of kit that I brought to the bank even more and it was just so much nicer you know just carrying less kit and also it simplified things on the bank for me because I could find things easier I could find things quicker it was easier to pack up it was easier to set up and that made it a big difference for me not being well so it made a massive difference for me instead of starting a session in a massive amount of pain which I used to the, the it used to take me hours to get all my stuff to the bank on top of lugging a manual barrow I used to be in absolute agony by the time I by the time I got to the bank and you know before I broke light I was almost in tears sometimes probably was in tears sometimes because it was hurting so much and I you know I just got to the point where something's got to give so once I'd cut all my kit down then I started looking right so I've got my kit down and at that time I hadn't like let my waist sling and my scales were in the kit that I would bring down to the lake and then I did a couple of sessions where I thought, hang on a minute, I'll leave my waist scales and my, because um, I've always fished difficult waters like this, I don't always fish like runs waters. So I thought I'll leave my scales and my, um, and my uh, sling and everything else in the car. And if I need it, I'll ask someone, do you mind just watching this fish? And I'll dash back and get my gear. And I realized catching fish, I was like, I don't care about the weight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about running back and getting it. I'm enjoying it without getting the kit out of the car. I don't need to know how much it weighs. And I, I realised after a little while, and just after that, I just left the gear at home. And now that's, you know, years and years and years have gone since, and I just don't weigh my fish anymore because I don't care. I just realised that, that I didn't need to weigh my fish to enjoy it. I didn't need to put a, a number on the fish to enjoy it. I just, um, I just uh, enjoyed catching them and putting them back. That was the bit that gave me the, the buzz and just that extra process of weighing it and giving it a number didn't really care to me, you know. Um, so yeah, that's in answer to your question. That took 12 minutes to answer, but in answer to your question, mate, you know you are. Um, that's why I don't put weights down on all my fish, because I um, cause I don't know. Cool again. Um, I hope that's okay. I mean, if you want me to guess the weights, let me know and I'll give you a, a rough estimate if, that, if you really want to know. I can, you know, I can, I've been fishing long enough that I can tell you if it's a, you know, within five pounds, I can tell you, you know, normally, okay, this is a 20, this is a mid 20, this is a low 30, this is an upper 30 or whatever. If you want me to do that on all the fish, I'm more, more than happy to do that. If you just want some sort of like, um, you know, kind of relation to how big the fish is, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, but if you don't care, great. And I just won't even think about it. Um... So yeah, so that's that's one part of the fishing that I simplified. And then the other bit I simplified, which really, really did make it easier on my fishing, and I've caught so much more fish because of it, is I simplified my rigs and I simplified my bait. So I've had a few people over the years, not loads, just a few people over the years say, can you give me a little hand? And I'm more than happy to do it. Um, and the biggest thing that I do is when I, when I tell them, right, let's, let's, one, show me your rig board, show me what you do for rigs, and show me what you do for bait. And I guarantee you now, every single person I've had this conversation with has come up with a rig board that's got more blinking rigs on it than God knows what. Exactly like mine used to be, we've all done it. Exactly like mine used to be before I simplified things. They bring a rig board up with 50,000 different rigs on it and they bring about 75 different pots of pop-ups and say, right, I've tried one. <laughs> so, and, and I suppose we've, we've all been there, isn't it? We've all been there, haven't we? And it's, um, you end up getting your head in a mess and videos on youtube and and things don't help because they're everybody's saying oh try this try this because it'll catch your fish and stuff and um it's um it can do your head in after a while it can do your head in so my biggest 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 tip on catching more fish is simplify things get rid of everything you you're only going to come across certain substrates and i mean you, you're only going to need certain rigs to um to catch fish if you look at bottoms that you've come across, that's sounded rude, didn't it? Um, if <laughs> if you go, if you think of lake bottoms that you've come across, substrates. Oh god, I've lost it. So if you think of um, lakes that you fished, yeah, and think about what you're dealing with on the bottom, there's only certain lake. There's only certain bottoms, isn't there? So there's, there's flat ones, there's round ones, there's pear no. There's um, there's gravel. So I'm probably going to miss ones here. If I miss ones, tell me. But there's gravel, there's clay, there's mud, there's sand, there's silt. That's... Oh, and weed, obviously. 
that's it, isn't it? And then all them things are broken up into different kind of subsections. So you've got soft silt, slightly firm silt, sand and mud is sand and mud, clay is clay. Although you get sometimes you get softer clay. Um, weed, you either get kind of shallow weed, medium weed, deep weed or silk weed. And then you get different types of weed in between. And then you get gravel and you either get fine gravel or you get really rocky stuff. Now, what I would do is get yourself a bit of paper and write down all those different substrates, all those different situations you're in, and think, right, what are my favourite rigs and what do I need to cover all these situations? And you'll realise if you do that, there's only about three different rigs you need. Three, pro probably four, maybe max, of rigs that you need. And that's all I fish with. And I fish, um, I very, very, very rarely change my rigs. And if I do change them, it's only just because I see a new bit of equipment come out that I think, oh, that's better than what I'm using already. So, for instance, a stiff hinge rig or something. If I'm, I've used mouth trap for God knows how long, if all of a sudden tomorrow someone come up with a stiff bristle filament that was better than mouth trap, I'd be on it straight away. Um, I wouldn't change the rig. The rig would be exactly the same, but I would use a different material. So that's, um, I'll, I'll tell you what, an example of that is the OMC uh, Bloodliners. I've used a little bit of shrink tubing to kink over my rigs for donkeys. And um, I saw the um, I saw uh, the Bloodliner things from OMC, and they're not new, they're, people have done this before. But I found, no sorry, I didn't find, someone found a bloodworm bed on here once. And I thought, oh that might be a good thing and it coincided and I thought I'll get some bloodworm blood liners and that might mimic the bloodworm that he found and that might you know just might give me a little edge or whatever and then when I started using them I realized it was so much nicer than using shrink tube so I've now started using them in my rigs so you find little evolutions the rig hasn't changed just the little bits of thing that I use the little bits of kit that I use have changed so am I bright enough yeah so um I'm not going to go massively into it now, what rigs I use, but just um, if, if um, I tell you what, let, let me give you an example of all the different substrates, if I can do it off the top of my head. I'll do a better video on this one day if you like, and if anybody is struggling out there, then they can kind of follow this video and see, and maybe get their rigs out and, and simplify it. But just off the top of my head, let's have a sip of coffee. Let's think about it for a second. So, so fishing on sand, mud, clay, fine gravel, yeah, are all firm bottoms. So for all those four sections, you can use the same rig. So now whether I, whenever I can fish a firm area, I always, always fish a bottom bait or a wafter. More often than not, a bottom bait and I'll fish a stiff section because I think stiff sections are m much easier to, um, to uh, much harder, sorry to reject. I think a stiff section is much better. In my opinion, this is all just my opinion, and what I use is a German rig. Uh, I think they call it a turbo German rig or something, very similar to how a Ronnie is made, but um, I use a stiff uh, filament and I have it just, uh, I, have, I use a choddy hook and I just have a, a stiff section with a hook and then I'll have my bait coming off of a bait screw. Excuse me. So in that scenario, firm, firm, firm bottom. Just think, think of what rig you need. Um, yeah, just whatever, whatever you want. Pick a bottom bait rig um, for for them situations. Then what situations else have you got? Right for silkweed, for silt, for low line weed, and. Maybe like small rocky areas. Yeah. See, rocky areas are a bit different because you need a bit of a hardcore approach to that because you're going to get cut off. So let's ignore rocky areas for a minute. That's a bit of a section in itself. But for silkweed, for low line weed, for silt, them three areas, you need something. I did, again, my opinion, um, a helicopter rig and something like a Ronnie is perfect. If you're new to fishing, get on the Ronnies. They're so easy to tie, they're so easy to use, their hooking efficiency is awesome. Um, as long as you use them right with a sharp hook, you're going to catch fish in them. Um, people who say don't use Ronnie said, what are you using them? It's all nonsense. I've been using Ronnies myself, they're, they're awesome. Um, so, yeah, if you're new to fishing, get on a Ronnie. So much easier to use. 
you know, you, once, you, once you're in it and you're catching a lot of fish and you know what you're doing, you've got time to experiment, and then if you want to graduate from a Ronnie and use something else that's slightly more um, tailored to what you're doing, fine. But Ronnie is honestly really, really an awesome rig. So your bottom bait rig, you covered, yeah? A Ronnie will cover a lot of things. And then all you need then to cover is weed that is deep and... I think that's it, isn't it? Have I covered everything? Yeah, and weed that is deep, personally, in my opinion, it's a stiff injury. That's my go to. Uh, and I suppose you could put a choddy in there as well, but a choddy is basically a stiff injury, fished without a boom. So they're both essentially the same thing, just fished, one's fished with a boom, one's fished without. So choddy slash injury for deep, weedy areas. And when I say deep, I'm talking about like a metre, anything more than a metre, I wouldn't be fishing in that. I'd be fishing, I'd be looking for a clean spot. I don't think it's safe fishing in areas that are, that are deeper than a metre, uh, weed-wise. Um, yeah. So that's, think of that, that's three rigs. So Ronnie, um, so a Ronnie for, um, for silt, low-lying weeds, silk weed, that sort of stuff. A, um, a uh, bottom bait rig of your choice. Again, I use a German, whatever you want to use and then a, um, a choddy or a stiff inch for deep weed and you can cover every single base you'll come across with that the only other thing i would say is i like pva bags a lot i really use pva bags a lot as well so that's another rig that i've got in my armory so i use um i use a, a little two inch pva bag rig um plenty of them on the internet you can find them they're all good well most of them are good um so yeah that's another rig that i use so if you looked in my rig book now you see four rigs and again i'll talk about them in, uh, one day and why i use all of them and how i've come up with all of them um, but if you've got your rig board out now and just thought of that, cut yourself down to just three or four rigs and get rid of everything else and force yourself to use one of those rigs in all the situations, your head will be so clear that it will, you'll enjoy your fishing more. I guarantee it. I hope that helps someone. I hope that makes it a little bit clear on, um, on what I do and I hope it helps you to get your head clear and I promise you if you just simplify things it'll make it easier and with regard to me weighing fish I'm not saying you have to go out and stop weighing fish because you're going to enjoy it it's just how I do it um hello Mr Robin um so yeah just maybe look at maybe look at all your kit before the next season look at all your kit and think you know can I slim it down a bit can I make things easier for myself and and you never know you might start the year a lot lighter in the head and in the uh in the arms and you might find you enjoy your fishing a bit more anyway that's me waffling for 25 minutes on nothing i hope you're all well i'm gonna say goodbye i'm gonna go get my zig kit to try and catch that fish <laughs> i'll see you later guys take care bye